Let us now consider the microscopic features of testes. I'm grateful to Dr. Michael Horsch of University of Michigan Medical School for providing the images of histology sections. Male reproductive system consists of the gonad testis, duct system including epididymis, vas deferens with its terminal dilated part called as ampulla, ejaculatory ducts and the male urethra. Accessory sex glands including prostate, seminal vesicle, bulbourethral glands and urethral glands of litter. External genitalia including penis and scrotum. Inside the tunica vaginalis, testis has a thick fibrous covering called as tunica albuginia, which sends in septa to divide the gland into 200 to 250 lobules. Each lobule of testis consists of 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules. Two ends of this seminiferous tubule continue posteriorly as straight tubules. These straight tubules anastomose in the posterior mediastinum testis to form the rete testis. And from the superior end of mediastinum testis, 8 to 12 efferent ductules exit. They become coiled into conical shaped conivasculosae, which occupy the head of epididymis. These efferent ductules then open into a highly coiled duct of epididymis, which continues to form the body as well as tail of epididymis. Distally, this duct of epididymis continues as vas deferens. Testes are a pair of gonads suspended in the scrotum by spermatic cord. They are the primary sites for production of spermatozoa. They also act as endocrine glands because they secrete testosterone. Here, we are also seeing section of rete testis in the mediastinum as well as a section of epididymis. Testis is enclosed in a tough capsule having three layers. Outer layer is the tunica vaginalis. It's a continuation of processus vaginalis. It has a smooth, moist layer of mesothelium, which is simple squamous epithelium. The middle layer is the tunica albuginia, which is a dense collagenous sheath. It projects inwards on the posterior aspect to form an incomplete septum called as mediastinum testis. And innermost layer is the delicate tunica vasculosa, which contains plexus of blood vessels as its name suggests. Tunica albuginia also sends in septa to divide the testis into 200 to 250 lobules. Each lobule contains 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules. Each seminiferous tubule is about 50 centimeters long and this length of the tubule is coiled and accommodated within the lobule. Hence, when we see the section of testis, we see multiple cut sections of seminiferous tubules in each lobule with varying sh shape and size because they are cut in different planes. And between these seminiferous tubule sections, we find connective tissue stroma, which contains interstitial cells of Leydig. Seminiferous tubules are lined by a complex stratified seminiferous epithelium, and it is covered by tunica propria made up of connective tissue and myoid cells. Contraction of these myoid cells is important because it helps in movement of spermatozoa as well as testicular fluid into the genital ducts. Two basic cell populations are found in the seminiferous tubule. One set of cells are the Sertoli cells and the other set of cells are the spermatogenic cells. Sertoli cells are the columnar cells with apical and lateral processes. They extend along the full thickness of epithelium. They have an oval euchromatic nucleus which is perpendicular to the base of uh, plane of the basal lamina and it has a central nucleolus. But these cells are not easily distinguished in H and D sections. They serve many functions. They support and nourish the spermatogenic cells. They phagocytose excessive cytoplasm which is extruded by the spermatids. They secrete Mullerian inhibiting factor in early embryonic period which facilitates the development of male genital system. They also secrete testicular fluid and express inhibin B and androgen binding factor in the adult life. Throughout adult life, they also form blood testis barrier through the tight junctions with adjacent Sertoli cells so that the seminiferous tubule is divided into two compartments. The basal compartment contains 
diploid spermatogenic cells that is spermatogonia and early primary spermatocytes. The adluminal compartment contains primary spermatocytes of pachytin stage and beyond, secondary spermatocytes, spermatids and spermatozoa so that these cells having haploid DNA content are sequestered into a separate compartment so that there is no immune response against them. In the basal compartment, we find three types of spermatogonial cells. Type A dark cells contain dark granular ovoid nucleus. These are the stem cells which divide homotypically to form type A cells again or heterotypically to form type A pale cells later. Type A pale cells contain light granular ovoid nucleus. These cells divide to form type B cells which have a spherical nucleus with clumps of chromatin at the nuclear membrane and most often they show even a presence of nucleolus. And these type B spermatogonia undergo mitosis to give rise to primary spermatocytes. These are the large cells with round nuclei containing condensed chromatin. Primary spermatocytes of pachytin stage are, and beyond are found in the adluminal compartment. They show condensed chromatids and these primary spermatocytes complete the first meiotic division to form the secondary spermatocytes. The secondary spermatocytes however rapidly complete their second meiotic division and hence are difficult to find. They form spermatids which are found in the luminal surface. These spermatid cells undergo spermiogenesis which include DNA compaction, acrosome formation, cytoplasm reduction and flagella formation to form the spermatozoa. As the seminiferous epithelium in adults forms a site of intense cell division, we can see different phases of cell division in a section of seminiferous tubule as is shown by anaphase and telophase here. Total time taken for a spermatogonium to become a mature spermatozoa is about 64 days. Cross section of one seminiferous tubule may show different phases of spermatogenesis along its circumference because the spermatogenic cycle progresses in a spiral wave. Although the spermatozoa which are formed here are structurally mature, they attain motility only when they reach epididymis. Third type of cell found in the testis are the interstitial cells of Leydig which are found in the connective tissue stroma between the seminiferous tubules. These are large polygonal cells with eosinophilic cytoplasm due to abundant smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Cytoplasm also contains lipid droplets, lipofusin granules and rod shaped crystals of Rinke. These cells secrete testosterone. Posterior part of the seminiferous tubules have a fewer cells or fewer layers of cells in the seminiferous epithelium. Therefore, they appear shorter in height. And as the straight tubule is approached, the tubules gradually come to be lined only by Sertoli cells. This lining changes to simple cuboidal epithelium in the straight tubules. Rita testis shows anastomosing straight tubules in the connective tissue stroma of the mediastinum testis. Rita testis is lined by flat cells to simple cuboidal epithelium and these tubules are covered by circular smooth muscle. So quickly recalling what we have seen so far, testis is the male gonad producing spermatozoa and also it acts as an endocrine gland producing testosterone. It is divided into 200 to 250 lobules, each containing 1 to 4 seminiferous tubules. Testis has three coverings from outside inwards, tunica vaginalis, tunica albuginea and tunica vasculosa. It has three types of tubules, main tubules are the seminiferous tubules, the terminal parts are the straight tubules which anastomose with each other to form the tubules of Rita testis. There are three types of cells in the lobules, Sertoli cells and spermatogenic cells found within the seminiferous tubule and Leydig cells found in the connective tissue stroma. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed this video. You can also visit this site for similar histology videos.